Let's get into it. Sold Not For Sale podcast. Now, Joe Rogan is about to talk about a psychedelic experience that he had, and I think it gives us a little read into what's been going on with Joe. If you know the channel, you know I covered an episode where he was talking about not wanting to criticize people anymore, and I took that as who is going to speak truth to power if he's not there to do it on the biggest platform in the world currently, media platform. Now, I'm about to play a clip for you where he talks about the psychedelic experience, but I also want to add the fact that this is the first time that we've seen Joe Rogan take this long off the podcast. He released an episode today. It's Friday, October 20th. The last one he did was last Thursday. It's been eight days. Even through the pandemic, he never took eight days off. Now, I have a couple of theories. I'll say say the first one. Well, I have three theories. I'll say the first one. Could just be need a vacation, did some psychedelics, now I need a vacation, I need to chill for a bit. That could be one. Now, there's another theory that I have that is very dark, and I hope it's not true. There's another theory I have that is absolutely incredible, and I pray that it's true. Let's get into the clip first. This is him speaking with Sam Altman about the psychedelic experience that has recently changed the way he looks at things, his podcast and himself. And I think when we open it, it's just we're not going to go back. Just like we're not going to go back to no computers without some sort sure. of natural disaster. By the way, uh, I, and I mean this is a great compliment, you are one of the most neutral people I have ever heard talk about the merge coming. You're just like, yeah, I think it's going to happen. You know, it's be good in these ways, bad in these ways. But you seem like unbelievably neutral about it, which is always something I admire. I try to be as neutral about everything as possible, except for corruption, which I think is just like one of the most massive problems with the, the, the way our, our culture is governed. I think corruption is just a, and the influence of money is a, it's just a giant, terrible issue. But in terms of like social issues and in terms of uh, the way human beings believe and think about things, I try to be as neutral as possible because I think the only way to really truly understand yeah. the way other people think about things is to try to look at it through their mind. And if you have this inherent bias and this, uh, you have this uh, like very rigid view of what's good and bad and right and wrong, I, I don't think that serves you very well for understanding why people differ. And so I try to be as neutral and as objective as possible when I look at anything. And this is a skill that I've learned. This is not something I had in 2009 when I started this podcast. This podcast, I started just fucking around with friends and I had no idea what it was. I mean, there's no way I could have ever known. And but also had no idea what it was going to do to me and as far as the evolution of me as a human being I am so much nicer. I'm so much more aware of things I'm so much more uh, conscious of the way other people think and feel I'm just a totally different person than I was in 2009 Which is hard to recognize. That's I mean, cool. It's hard to believe That's really cool. That, but that is just an inevitable consequence of this unexpected Education that I've received did the empathy kind of like come on linearly Yes. And that was not a... No, it just came, it came on recognizing, well, first of all, it came on recognizing that uh, the, intera- the negative interactions on social media that I was doing, they didn't help me. They didn't help the person. And then having compassion for this person that's fucked up or done something stupid, like it doesn't, it's not good to just dunk on people. Like it's not, there's no benefit there yeah. other than to give you some sort of social credit and get a bunch of likes. It didn't make me feel good. Like that's not good. And then also a lot of psychedelics. A ton of psychedelic experiences from 2009 on and with every one a greater understanding of the impact like I had one recently and When I had the one recently like the overwhelming Message that I was getting through this was that everything I say and do Ripples off into all the people that I interact with and then if I'm not doing something with at least the goal of overall good or overall understanding that I'm doing bad and that that bad is a real thing as much as you try to ignore it because you don't interface with it instantly and you're still creating unnecessary negativity and that I should avoid that as much as possible. It was like an overwhelming message that this this psychedelic experience was giving me. And and I, I took it because I was just particularly anxious that day about the state of the world, particularly anxious about Ukraine and Russia and China and the, the, the political system that we have in this country and this incredibly polarizing way that the left and the right engage with each other. And God, it just, it just seems so just tormented 
And so I was just, I was just some days I just get, I think too much about it. I just, I'm like, I need something yeah. to crack me out of this. So I, I took these psychedelics. Are you surprised? So that was the trip that he had. And that's what it was telling him. Now I've had trips like this myself. And when you do, it is very jarring to say the least. And it does make you feel like things need to change. So here are my theories. Right. He has a psychedelic experience. He's starting to look at things differently. He's really stepping back, wanting not to criticize people, wanting to do overall good in the world, as most people should. This is what I'm thinking. OK, this is the, this is the first theory. I don't want it to be true. He may be sick. That's that's a thing that can happen. I've watched it. Happen. My father passed away uh, as I see my mother and uh, in-laws and all sorts of people that I know who are much older. As you get older, you kind of want to get right with God. Sometimes you go through a little bit of stuff and it pushes you to really want to improve yourself. Praying that that's not true. I'm not even going to spend much time on that theory other than saying that a lot of you in the comment section, you've seen clips where I show Joe when he's younger and I show Joe today. And then I let you know that the clip is only like three years apart and everybody's like, wow, he aged a lot in those three years, blah, blah, blah. Could be, could be sickness. Hope not. But again, you've never seen this long of a hiatus from the podcast, completely unannounced. Here's the second theory, much better theory. I want to focus on this one for a minute because I like it. I like to stay optimistic. Trump's security detail is unavoidable and it's very easy to see it coming. If he interviewed Trump in Texas, it would have been news everywhere. Because the same way he rolled in to Atlanta, he would have to roll into Texas, into Joe's studio area. That would also give people exactly the location of Joe's studio. And it would let everybody know that he's interviewing Trump. It would prepare all sorts of mainstream media outlets to start attacking Joe because that's what's going to happen the second that he reveals that he's interviewed Trump. So another reason that he could have randomly taken a hiatus is because... He went and interviewed Trump. I think Trump is the only person where he might understand I have to go to this person to interview them. Maybe, maybe not. Just my thinking. A little bit of wishful thinking as well as just taking an educated guess at this whole thing. The reason I say this is as, as a theory is because of what he just said the psychedelic experience brought him. Realizing that he should be doing overall good. The things that he does ripple out. Maybe he started to end wanting to criticize people less. So instead of looking at Trump as, in his words, as someone that he does not want to help, maybe he looked at it as, maybe I should be helping this person. Maybe I should be humanizing this person. Maybe this is a good act that will ripple through to the rest of the world as he's stated that he wants. Just theories, just theories. I've never met Joe. The closest I've ever been to him is this picture right here. That's it. That's just me. I'm thinking some, something, something is happening. That's just me. I watch this stuff very closely. I'm a little bit of a JRE historian, if you will. I'm sure that will become some kind of job in the future. Uh, <laughs> I'll be the only one working it. Uh, making minimum wage, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> but very interesting. Very interesting that he brought up that psychedelic experience and how it affected him. I've had this same type of experience myself. I've gone quite deep into the psychedelic realm. And it does kind of give you that nudge. And I have been sick to the point where I didn't know what was going on. And I've had to do biopsies and stuff. And I've had that coming to God moment. And I've also been saved by Christ as well. So I've experienced all these little bits and pieces that he has. And I don't know. I don't know. But it was an odd hiatus. Never seen him take this much off. And again, I'll go back to the first theory that I brought up briefly. Could just be a vacation. When I take a vacation, I like to just sit with my wife and we talk about aliens and all sorts of wild, you know, conspiratorial type stuff. When he takes a vacation, maybe he goes to the Vatican. Maybe he goes to... To, to some island that none of us have ever heard of where he gets to, and I don't mean that type of island. I mean like a tropical island, okay? I'm not saying that type of thing. I'm just saying maybe he just goes on a very secluded vacation with the fam, you know? But other than that, 
hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And if you haven't already checked out the website, please do. You guys know exactly what website I'm talking about. This is IamCoachColin.com. Get the public enemy number one shirt because this gentleman runs the World Economic Forum and the World Economic Forum is no friend of yours, believe me, or get this one right here, the mainstream news brainwashing citizen shirt because that's what MSNBC really stands for. Trust me. And other than that, I'm out.